I'm Jim McGregor. And I'm Kevin Crewell. And we're here to talk about hot chips. And we're here on the lovely uh, Stanford campus, Stanford University, in a nice sunny day. Yes. Um, first off, let's give a little background. What is Hot Chips? Uh, hot, hot Chips is a conference that is all about high performance processors, including CPUs, SOCs, networking processors. Um, it's all about the latest and greatest in the processor business, and usually have companies like AMD, Intel, Qualcomm, NVIDIA, um, uh, Broadcom all presenting a, a conference like this. But there's also a number of startups, and it's a uh, and universities and universities. Yes, uh, universities presented, startups to present. It, it's a very broad range uh, conference, and it, br it attracts really some of the best chip designers in the area yeah. and, uh, and and from afar. It's it's one of the premier uh, conferences to get together to talk about high performance processing. Now, it used to be uh, the conference for launching new technologies, new architectures, new Well, new, new chips. I mean, it, it actually, uh, going back to our, our days at Instat, it was a microprocessor forum that was originally the starting point for all the new products. That's true. And then that folded many years ago. Um, and then Hot Chips has taken up the mantle to replace yeah. that. And before it was more more purely academic and, and not so focused on new chips and startups and, and new introductions. But in the last few years, to fill the gap when Microprocessor 4 went away, it took on that mantle. And, and uh, there's a program committee and an organizing committee, and the program committee uh, asks for presentations to come in, they evaluate them, and they choose who gets to present. Now, it's also morphed over time. When we yeah. first started getting uh, engaged with hot chips, it used to be about um, the CPUs. Then it was about GPUs. And now it's kind of AI, AI, AI. I know. <laughs> I, 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 I was just telling somebody uh, a little while ago, it's sort of drowning in AI right now. <laughs> it is. Even there's, there's different sections on networking processors, on high-performance processors, on specialty processors and AI processors, but quite honestly, AI is pervasive across all of those. Right. I mean, one of the networking presentations was for, uh, the Dojo system from uh, Tesla, and it was about their their Dojo um, supercomputer for training on mm -hmm. on video, the train uh, of videos for um, you know autonomous driving. But it was about the networking for, the, for those uh, for that system, and so it was a networking presentation. But it was directly related to AI. Yeah, and we've seen, and, and uh, even though some of the products and stuff aren't new here, we are seeing deep dives on some of the technologies. So, like Qualcomm, you know, instead of talking about their Snapdragon X Elite, they talked specifically uh, about the Orion CPU that's going into it. Yep. And, you know, one of the themes that I've kind of heard at this conference that is kind of different than the past is balance, balance, balance. Balance you know, designs. Designing around balance. And just to give you a feel, you know, traditionally it was you were so crunched on time and you had this huge list of features you wanted to include that you just had to get the first chip out the door. And then you spent the next two generations kind of optimizing it, balancing it. You know, when we say balance, it's balancing the all, all the different, uh, trying to get rid of the bottlenecks or any slack that you have in terms yeah. of timing. So you don't want CPU, you don't want cores sitting there idle. You don't want, you want to make sure you have enough memory bandwidth. All these different things you need to make sure that you have a really efficient processor. Yep. Now everyone seems to really be focused on doing that up front. Yeah, and, and part of that is, you didn't have as much of a, um, a suite of test uh, software. And then you throw it out there, and then you have people run software on it from various applications, and then you see, oh, well, that didn't run real well because it's a bottleneck. And then you go fix the bottleneck in the next generation. Here they're trying to do much more testing up front, more simulations up front, uh, and with more advanced uh, CAD tools so they can get that done and, and have more optimized core at the door. Uh, the interesting, I thought, all other interesting thing about the uh, Qualcomm presentation is uh, Jared talked about the philosophy of his yes. designs, and going back to his days at in, at, at Apple, and going forward, uh, Nuvia, and then now at uh, Qualcomm, mm -hmm. that his he's again this that balance. He was trying to get the right balance of everything. One of the things we did find out the Nuvia core, uh, the Nuvia design is still pretty much uh, today today in the new Snapdragon X Elite. This minus some of the mainframe or say server type of technology, yes. ECC and that. ECC memory, yeah. but it's definitely sure. designed to handle 
uh, heavy workload. So it, that's why it's a very beefy processor that can handle uh, keeping competitive with x86. Yeah, in, and, in notebooks. and those EDA tools are kind of an underpinning of this whole thing. You know, not just the capabilities of them, but integrating AI within those tools and even using separate agents that mm -hmm. can use those tools. Yeah. So AI agents. So yeah. it's kind of interesting. And obviously, uh, besides just trying to increase performance, thermals are becoming a huge issue. So we're hearing more about thermals. They even had a, um, a tutorial on advanced uh, thermal management, advanced cooling techniques um, yeah. on the first day. Yeah, yeah. the, the conference actually one of the on Sundays, um, they have a tutorial sessions, and it, it's covered AI in the past. It's covered uh, advanced packaging technologies, and this year was a model about thermal design and, and cooling. Um, one of the interesting things about talking about packaging is there was a really interesting contrast between because Nvidia talked about Blackwell yesterday, and then AMD talked about the MI three hundred, and you had a very con uh, uh, co well contrasting solution. Nvidia builds the biggest die they can. Mm -hmm. and an advanced process. And then for this year, for Blackwell, they finally put two dies in one package with their with the uh, HBM memory. AMD broke up their solution into eight chiplets plus four chiplets for memory. So 12 total. 12 total. And then put that in the package <clears throat> and gets very competitive solutions. So you ask the NVIDIA guys, well, we want to build the biggest chip we possibly can, keep it all in the chip. And then if we have to, we go, we go to a second chip. We, we were too big for the reticle, reticle being a uh, stepping um, a mask that is used to uh, print out all the, all the dye on a wafer. Uh, AMD took a totally different approach. NVIDIA went for maximum performance. AMD went for a balance of, going about balance, of performance, but also manufacturability. So with the smaller chiplets in the packaging, uh, they get better yields. Um, it's uh, higher manufacturing, lower manufacturing costs, um, and they have this advanced packaging technology at AMD, which gives them an advantage in this area. Yeah. So, I mean, we've heard presentations um, on a number of networking technologies. Intel was talking about the co-packaged co optics. Yeah. Um, there was there was another co-packaged optics one yesterday as well. Yeah. Um, and that we've also seen. So we've seen some on the networking side. We've seen some on the thermal side, we, but vast majority of the presentations are on either AI process or uh, processors or accelerators. Yeah. So we've heard from IBM, which introduced the new Tulum to Te uh, Tellum 2, Tellum 2 uh, processor and the Spire AI accelerator. Those right. are both for the IBM Z system mainframes. Yep. Which will be introduced next year. Yes. Uh, this was a unique presentation though, because the uh, Telum and, and now the Telum 2 have uh, an AI accelerator uh, built into it. But uh, in addition to that, they came up with a dedicated AI accelerator uh, to allow them to do generative AI uh, in mainframe applications. So this is uh, IBM saying the mainframe is relevant even in the Gen AI era. Yes, and highly scalable, being yeah. able to put a lot of these uh, PCIe cards in, in a single in a drawer. drawer. Yes. Yeah. So they can scale to many top, uh, hundreds of tops. Um, they've also, well, no, more than hundreds of pedotops. Uh, pedot yes. Yeah, pedotops. And then, uh, so that that was interesting scaling. That was brand spanking new presentation. Here. That was one of the few really new stuff. But there, there was a number of stars. One last night really kind of like twisted our head around a company called Furiosa. And they have a, a very different approach towards uh, how to do AI processing with a tensor contractor uh, solution that is a different mathematical model than typical uh, FMOLs. Well, and they put that, you know, it was probably one of the most detailed presentations, both yeah. from the chip and the programming side. Yeah, and the math. And, and they put that as the last one. <laughs> I know. Oh, and, and by last one, we're talking about like 6.45 yes. in the evening. It's like the conference starts at 9 and it goes to almost 7 o'clock. And it's like, we're, you know, it's like people are dying. I mean, there were obviously breaks all the way, but that's a long conference. So also at the conference, Intel's talking about Lunar Lake and Intel yep. 6. AMD's talking about MI300X yep. and Zen 5. Yep. Um, Gaudi, th do we do Gaudi 3. Gaudi, oh, Gaudi 3 is in yeah. there also for Intel. But um, Gaudi 3 looks actually really impressive. I, I, it has a lot of capabilities in it. Um, and and, um, and I hope you know, it, they should be getting more traction than I think they have. But uh, Gaudi 3 is coming out, and I think it looks really interesting chip. 
It is. Um, it'll be more interesting though next year when they combine it with the GPU Max series and yeah. support one API for better programmability. But yeah. it is it is definitely a competitive solution. Yep. And then you have uh, other startups like uh, Samba Nova, Tens Torrent. Um, actually, uh, later today we're 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 doing this at lunch on the second day. Uh, we'll have Cerebus talking. Um, AMD's doing, Victor Pank's going to be doing his swan song keynote uh, about the future of as, AI. As he retires he from retires. AMD. Um, there's also, uh, NVIDIA uh, went into some detail on Blackwell. Yep. Uh, and provided some really good R&D stuff on some of the thermal stuff on the first day, on some uh, yeah. of the advanced cooling techniques. Yeah. They're, I mean, much more into immersion uh, cooling now, the, the liquid cooling. Yeah, I'm... I'm I've been around mill aero applications. I just don't believe in the immersion, but we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Uh, de definitely, you know, cooling. One of, as a matter of fact, Supermicro had a great presentation on the first day talking about the benefits of liquid cooling. The fact that they can reduce the cooling, the, the power cooling costs uh, by 92% using liquid cooling mm -hmm. for just the cooling cost and reduce the overall data center cost, cooling or power cost by 40%. So huge benefit in terms of going to liquid cooling yeah uh sorry for the background noise there <laughs> yes uh, <laughs> i don't know if you could hear that uh but uh, you know uh, the other thing uh, one other trend that's uh there was a lot of risk five in uh, buried in the number of the presentations initially there was just one straight up risk five presentation from uh Ten from, Storm. well no today uh the chinese university is going to talk oh, about yeah, their yeah. risk five development but uh tense torrent using it um, and and it's embedded in a number of other designs, but Tenstore is very heavily into. Yeah, they, uh, talked, into they talked about the black hole yeah. uh, product and some of their programming techniques yeah. as well. Um, but also today's presentation by Meta, uh, yes. their system also uses uh, a both a, a dual core uh, RISC five. One's got a vector extension, one's just integer processing. Mm -hmm. So there's there's that. That's too. the that's the MTIA. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of, uh, to be honest with you, I don't think we can cover every chip that's no, talked about no. here. Um, and certainly not in the depth that they've talked about. It was, the presentations are pretty detailed. Uh, you you could pretty much write, I, I think, a very detailed book or pamphlet, at least, on each one of these uh, presentations. So it, it is a little bit overwhelming. Uh, if you're not attending, just to let you know, these presentations are available for nominal fee through the Hot Chips website. And they will eventually be in the public domain, either through hot chips or through uh, um, the companies themselves. Yeah. So even if you're not attending you can, or didn't attend, you can go and check out uh, the agenda and actually contact some of these companies and actually get these presentations. Hotchips.org. Yes. So anything else that stands out to you? Uh, well, that was it. I mean, I was a little disappointed with OpenAI. They had a keynote yesterday, and it was pretty generic <laughs> Very material. Generic. They didn't give it a lot of detail on... Their scaling issues, other than telling you about, you know, some of the problems they have. And there's, <laughs> yeah, but but it was just everything up and to the right, and just bigger, and bigger and bigger uh, uh, models that you, they would, they want to build. So, uh, actually, one thing that has also stood out to me, um, even though OpenAI had that keynote here, um, is how many times I'm seeing Llama. So, oh, the Llama so, models. Yeah. So many companies are focused more on Llama. It's almost like the shine has gone off of open ai and is shifting towards well llama, yeah especially with llama 3. yeah uh the, you've got the 8 billion parameter the 70 billion parameter and the uh 405 billion parameter models yeah. and that 400 just shifting from you know chat gpt 4.0 to that llama uh 3.1 with a 405 billion parameter model that's less than half the number of parameters mm. than a gpt4 so yeah. a lot of interest in using that and especially because uh meta is also giving it away yeah yeah, uh, and that's and that's also been a uh, you know the the open source uh, open environment like that. A I, in fact, even more of the, uh, speaking of open is uh, the Mojo uh, networking card for Dojo uh, uh, the, from Tesla. They're also releasing that into open. Uh, they're releasing that design as an yeah, open design. That's I oh, think the protocol. Sorry, the yeah. protocol. That, I think that's kind of a key theme. You know, a lot of the companies still have proprietary tools for optimization and everything yeah. else. Um, I'm seeing more and more interest and more and more push for open solutions. Yeah, and, and certainly uh, based around, you know, in terms of networking, based on Ethernet, either uh, the physical layer with a protocol, like in case of uh, uh, Mojo and Dojo, with a, a custom 
uh, protocol stack on top, but you know, standard Ethernet lower uh, physical layer. Yeah. So, all right, missing anything? No, that's mostly the the big the highlights. I think at this point. So no, uh, very good event, very highly attended. Yeah. Uh, some very good presentations, and once again, you know, it it continues to morph in the direction of the industry, which right now is about AI and everything around it, the processing requirements, the networking requirements, the efficiency requirements, and even the cooling requirements that yeah. we're having to face as we try to, I, I mean, that's probably, and if, if there's, I guess one thing that I think impresses me most about being in the industry right now is the fact that I can't remember a time where we weren't talking about increasing performance by 10, 15, even 20%. We're now talking about trying to increase performance with each generation by a hundred or a thousand percent. Mm -hmm. And that it's, it's a huge challenge to do that. So yeah. it, it is driving a lot of innovation in the industry. Yep. Um, lower uh, um, precision formats for data, especially in AI, going down to four bit. I think that's one of the uh, innovations that a number of companies have brought. Um, yeah, Nvidia is certainly bringing it to silicon with these lower precision formats, but other companies are, are behind, are coming behind very shortly with those as well. And that's you know that drives the efficiency up as well as you know Moore's law is slowing, so you can't just rely on you know cranking up clock speeds or packing twice the number of transistors anymore. Yeah, it's more about FP uh, FP four, FP six, right. MX six, MX nine, yeah, uh, F, uh, FP eight, N eight. It's yeah, it's I, I've I, there's been definitely a shift from those higher precision training yeah. uh, data formats to the lower precision, especially as we go into more production style applications for inference processing. Yeah. But you also learn a lot of stuff just talking to people. One thing I found is that in Europe, actually, even though FP64 is sort of like the de facto high performance standard for supercomputers, there's actually still a market for FP256. Uh, and wow. Yeah, it's it's mostly very scientific, very high performance compute stuff, uh, a, a very advanced modeling. Uh, but yeah, you think FP sixty four is a lot? No, nope, there's there's need for more than that. Even. Well, and this conference also tends to be had filled with rumors, and we've heard our share, but we're not going to cover that here. No, no that's <laughs> a, it's the, although what you also run into is uh, stealth startups. So yes. you know, somebody said, "Hey, aren't you working for you know this company?" No, well, I did, but now I'm working for a startup. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> see yeah, all kinds of weird names on badges. Yeah. So yeah, a lot the word stealth shows up quite a bit, actually. So no. Uh, Hot Chips in summary was is a, is still a great conference, a very yeah. valuable conference. I, I would say along with um, IEDM, ISSEC, you know, yep. talk, focusing on a lot of the semiconductor technology. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, even, you know, it's we're starting to see more of the system impact and the system view out of uh, hot chips and yeah, rightfully so. Yeah, it's, it, they're definitely moving further up into how to build systems, not just how to build chips. Yeah. Okay. Well, All thank right. you, Kevin. Thank you, Jim. Uh, it was great uh, for two of us to be here at the conference. We had a, a great time. Yes. And thank you for joining us. Take care.